Welcome to another episode of Life in the Peloton. We're in the third week now and the second rest day. Both Logan and myself have made it to the second rest day. Unfortunately, not my roommate anymore, but still the freshman on tour. If you haven't heard the last two episodes, go back and listen to them. We grab Logan just before the tour starts. We get him at the first rest day, which is nine days in, and it was pretty tough then for him. And now we've, we've had a little chat at the second rest day. It's really interesting to see his progress along the way. It's been a hard week of the mountains th- this week too. A lot of big mountains towards the end of the week. So we're all very happy to be here at this second rest day, I can tell you. I want to say thanks to everyone who's been purchasing the merchandise or even supporting the podcast at the Wide Angle Podium. All that stuff has been coming in and being able to help us produce this podcast here while I'm at the Vuelta and also to make a better podcast throughout the rest of the year and looking towards the next year too. Really, really appreciate all your support. I also wanted to celebrate for us making it to this final week of the Vuelta and to say thanks to everyone for tuning in over the last two weeks, but also for the whole year. We've got a little free shipping code on all merchandise items until the end of the Vuelta, so another week to come. Head over to our store, our Etsy store at lifeinthepeloton.com and put in the code PELOTALK, P-E-L-O-T-A-L-K at your checkout and grab something for yourself and there'll be free shipping on any item. I also want to say thanks to the Wide Angle Podium and be sure to go and check out their network of podcasts they've got going there too. They're supporting us and a a whole bunch of other great cycling podcasts that I've mentioned before, but one I always love to mention, which is my favorite, is the Slow Ride Pod. Now onto the podcast, episode three, the second rest day. I'm again on the bus with Logan, so the volume is a little bit shoddy, but I hope you can put up with it because it's great to capture him just after <laughs> after that hard stage before we've fully switched off and relaxed at the rest day. So sit back and enjoy. Logan Owen. We might as well start, and we're back back in the bus. We made it to the second rest day. Stage 16 is done. Thank the Lord. (laughs) Would you agree? Welcome, Logan. Well done, mate. You've made it to the second rest day, and not without a few hiccups along the way. So, welcome to the second rest day, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I uh, definitely had to work hard to get here, that's for sure. Went through some uh, bumps. And not only just the physical toughness of the stages that we had since the last rest day, but um, we also you're also ran into a, you know, a little tumble <laughs> a couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, going for trying to trying to get a little sprint action going, and uh, was in good position, and kind of got my chance taken away from me with the, with the crash and. Then that really, really hurt. Um, I was, I was more mad because it was like a chance that you don't often get to ride and try to get a good result, and you're in good position. But another big part of the reason why I was mad was I had to go over these mountains the next day, and I was just thinking, man, this is this is not what I need because it's already a hard race. It's already been really hard up to this point, so. Yeah, it was, uh, mentally it was really tough to push through that, and but that we, we did. We're well, let's rewind, because I want to get back to that point too. We, 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 we went straight to that point, but let's go back to the first rest day. First rest day, we got in super late, and it was a hard day in Andorra. Wake up the next morning, you started to feel a little crook. Yeah, I woke up feeling absolutely terrible on the first, first rest day. I, we had the whole gondola ordeal where we were waiting at the top of the mountain for like an hour to get into a gondola freezing. And then the next day, yeah, I woke up sick and I, yeah, I felt really, really bad. And we had, I have to interrupt, we had the pancake breakfast organized. <laughs> yeah. 10 o'clock pancake breakfast. I went down at 10. I scoffed into like 15, 16 pancakes. 
put a litre of maple syrup on there, and there's heaps left. Next thing I know, it's 11 o'clock ride. I had to come and wake you up about quarter to 11, and you're just like, oh, I'm not good. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you missed a pancake breakfast. <laughs> yeah. So it was a double whammy. It was a double whammy. I, I was even a protagonist in getting the pancakes as well a little bit. And to miss miss out, it was it was a big bummer. But uh, yeah, I slept through. Woke up about 15 minutes before the bike ride. Slammed on my kit and rolled down. Then just just did it. Just pump, pumped it out. Just and pumped it out because I didn't want to make people wait. And, and it was a hard ride too because we went that day and we reconned the <laughs> yeah, time trial, <laughs> which is a really hard circuit. And and like we we're just saying, you weren't feeling great. And then that night or maybe it was after the time trial actually, you start to just go, you know what, I've actually come down with something. Yeah. What were you thinking then? Yeah, at first, I mean, I always hate to get somebody sick and like, it's always tough because you don't really know. It's my first Grand Tour. I didn't know whether I was just absolutely pinned or if I was like, excuse me, if I was getting sick or if I was allergies or something with the altitude. I, I really didn't know, like, I had, yeah, I just felt terrible. So, yeah, it was hard to hard to make a call on like whether I was actually sick or whatever. But maybe in in hindsight, I probably should have like tried to. We probably should have moved rooms earlier because luckily you didn't end up getting sick. No, I definitely should have tried to move earlier to uh, prevent that. But were you freaking out at that point? Because this week was quite a big week. You know, we had quite a lot of mountain stages this week we had a, a lot of medium mountain stages and then the end of the week it was pretty much this week went time trial i got to try and remember it was time, time trial then what was the next stage uh, I think it was like a oh that was the stage Lawson got in the break yeah like and it was a really mountain. difficult start at the start yeah at stage of the start and then we actually had quite an easy day yeah and you were like it's a blessing in disguise for you because the yeah. start was hard but ultimately we got to roll in yeah i was swinging at the back even though everybody was just riding easy i was literally it was me and like four other guys that were sick just at the back hacking hacking up a lung and just dying and uh everybody else is just tapping away and <laughs> it was a bad feeling that's for sure and then the next day we had also quite a hard start um, and then, you know, then we went into this four day block where it was just like really, really tough day through the Basque country, up and down all day. So it should have been a flat, easy sprint day, which we ended up being a sort of a medium tough day. And that was the day that you had, in, in the end, ended up having a crash. And I remember in the morning, we are having our team meeting and the DS said, you know, the director was saying, look, guys, just have a day off today. We've had some hard days before. We've got some hard days coming. Have a day off. And I remember you saying to me earlier in the pod, I wouldn't mind having a bit of a sprint. And so you put your hand up that day. <laughs> no, 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 no. You put you put my hand up, which was it, it was it was good because I mean I should have had that. I should have done that anyway. But you, it was good that you you put my hand up. And it was me. exciting, you know. Yeah, like yeah. it was it was like a good chance, you know. Nothing. There was no pressure either way. It could have gone. You know, if you'd finished 30th, it wouldn't have mattered. If you'd won the stage, it wouldn't have mattered either. We were just being happy. So what happened? Yeah, I mean, it ended up being a pretty, actually it was a pretty relaxed day for the most part along the coast. We, were, we weren't we were going at a crazy hard pace or anything. It was pretty, pretty relaxed. And then all of a sudden, I don't know where we were, but we were going through these twisty roads, like up and down, really. The Peloton was lined out. And, all of a sudden we just started going really hard really hard and i was like what is happening and i was like i don't know what's happening but i have to get to the front and <laughs> me and you were together for a little bit and then i was like i, I just gotta keep moving gotta keep moving because like it it was crazy hard and then um yeah we came flying into this we go through this town just full like full-on lead out train basically if you can imagine it. And then, uh, yeah, into this Cat 3 climb, and we go full biscuit up that. And it was actually really good. You you helped me a lot there because you came up. We were, I was just rolling up to the back of the bunch, and it was kind of bubbling a little bit on the climb. But everybody was still going full tilt. But um, you came up around and actually pulled me back to the front, and that was, that was like, super helpful. And then, yeah, from there, from then on in, it was a pretty straight run into the finish. Mm kind of a block headwind so it was yeah I just kind of floated around I'm, I'm pretty good with the 
moving through the moving through the field. So I just tried to flip my way up there, and I was in really good position with 1K to go. And yeah, there was uh, one guy went tried to go through a gap that wasn't really there, and he ended up not making it and bouncing off and coming straight across and just basically I had nowhere to go and came straight across my front wheel and I did a Superman at 1K to go. So uh, it was it was a bummer because it was a real, real good opportunity to, to get a good result for myself, which as a, as a young, young pro, it was, uh, yeah, it's a bummer, but. Look, and I see that side too, but I also see the other side. And a couple of guys came out of that crash worse than you and didn't end up finishing the stage and aren't in the race anymore. So I guess you've got to look at it that way. And also, also the way true. you've been going since that crash, yesterday was a tough day for you, but ultimately it was a tough day for everyone. You got through okay. And today, again, was a very tough day. And you were bouncing around on those climbs really well too. So I know you're probably not at your best shape, but it seems like it hasn't affected you too much. No, yeah, I was actually, I came, yeah, like you said, I came really, really lucky from the crash, and uh, yeah, I've been kind of on a steady rise ever since, like, the Andorra rest day, like, feeling like just absolute dog crap the whole whole time. Uh, I've been on a steady rise after that, and even with the crash, I was, I'm surprised that I was still feeling okay today and, and yesterday, so it was, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see how I, how I come out of the out of the rest day. It'll be uh, very interesting. What's your feeling now though? What's your general gut feeling like being here, second rest day? Have you got that sort of feeling? Because I felt like yesterday, I felt a little bit of, we're over a little bit of a hump. Yep. And today especially. Yep. Yeah, I'm no, definitely I... not going to, sorry, I'm definitely not going to say it's a downhill run in, no. but I can sort of smell Madrid a little bit. Not yeah. that much, but I can get a little waft. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, and it's not even the fact that we have, obviously we have hard stages, like a couple hard stages coming up, but the way we've raced so far, like you and I, especially because we always end up in the same groupetto for the most part, I, I'm i not worried really at all for the mountain days because I think we're we're both riding really well and climbing climbing pretty well for the for the most part. So there's a lot, of, a lot more people that I've seen that are hurting a little bit more than we are. So I don't mm. know, I'm... I, quietly confident. Quiet. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah I, you I can say it. I know, but like I, I don't you know. You have feel, the confidence, the belief. Yeah. I mean, it it gives you some reassurance that that you you can make it. Like, obviously, you're gonna be on the limit. Like, we're all gonna be on the limit. But you have you know that you're good enough to really push through those days. Hmm. But I mean, obviously, you don't know going into the third week. For me, at least, I don't know. You don't. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's definitely some uncharted territory so uh yeah i'm uh i'm looking forward to seeing how it goes well we've got some questions here now we missed these last week because they didn't get in in time and we ended up recording on the bus <laughs> but we'll see if we can sort of pick and pick a few out here well this is still relevant what are your thoughts on the stages and the route so far of this vuelta this is prodigy 79 um yeah the route and stages of this Vuelta have been uh, been pretty hard. And I, I remember uh, we were talking just before the stage today, and you were saying like it's it was way harder than the Vuelta last year or whatever. Obviously, it wasn't quite as hard as the Giro, but uh, <laughs> it's been it's been really hard. And I don't know, Wama even said that in the last 15 years, he thinks it's one of the harder hardest harder or hardest Vueltas of of the recent excuse me recent time so I don't know it's uh, for me it's it's yeah it's my first time so I'm just just trying to trying to go with the flow but it, it has been really hard it's there's it's good. not a lot of easy days out there and that's got to give you confidence too you know like Wama our sports director he's written I don't know 30 grand tours in his time and seen a million other grand tours so for him to make a comment like that and for you to get through a sickness and two crashes and still be here in the race, not even just here, like really in the middle of the bunch, comfortably here. I think that's got to give you confidence too for the future. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, I was, I was really worried that those injuries were going to send me back, like, and possibly take me out of the race. So to be able to still be here and hearing what he said about that, it's yeah. Ah, I'm excited. You're like, okay. yeah, I am good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told you guys. Yeah. Nah, I'm just kidding. All right, Andorra stage. 
How cool was it yesterday? Well, last week. How cool was yesterday's Andorra stage? So how cool was last week's Andorra stage? Oh, okay. So we're jumping back in time. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you um, reckon they mean cool as in temperature? Because it was bloody cold at some points. Yeah. Or do you reckon they mean cool like as in cool? Yeah, it wasn't... It wasn't that cool. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it was cool, but it wasn't that... The, gra- the gravel bit, I mean, I'm a cyclocross guy. I have a cyclocross background. I really did not enjoy doing the muddy gravel bit after all the mountains, not gonna mm. lie. But those, those mountains were really tough and Would yeah. you have preferred, because the other option was to send down 4K and yeah. then climb back up 4K? Yeah, I, it's a I, I've never done that road, so it's hard for me to say. I mean, the I can tell bit, you for sure you would rather do the gravel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just I, I hate to get my shoes dirty, to be honest. Yeah, it was pretty <laughs> grimy. How much of a grand tour is mental versus physical? What have you found out so far? Uh, yeah, I th- think it. I think it's a little fifty-fifty. Obviously, you have to have the legs to do it, but there are times where you like you're at a low point like like when I was sick like I was mentally I was like I I just got to get through this day I keep keep trying to get through these days and get healthy and that was I mean for me that was a mental low point and like I struggled there a lot but ended up coming out but if you didn't have the right mentality if you didn't have the motivation to like want to keep going then it you're, you're done done it once you get sick or really injured or anything what do you miss most on a grand tour Mm. definitely miss my wife (laughs) that's probably yeah but I mean I haven't seen her in a little bit but uh Wendy's Wendy's uh uh Apex I miss Apex. What's Apex? It's a, it's a video game. Oh, yeah? Uh, that's what? what I do as a hobby when I'm back home. TV or computer video game? Uh, it's like an, like an Xbox. Oh, yeah. yeah right. I, play, I play with Sean Bennett. Right. My teammate. What's the hardest thing in pro cycling except missing your family? Mm, I think just the constant travel. Yeah. The constant good call. traveling, moving from hotel to hotel, always in a different spot. Um, yeah, it's definitely it's a tough thing to get your head around, and you basically got to take your life and make it so that you can live your life on a, on on the move. Exactly, and it's hard to really feel grounded and like get a routine and. You know, even just to communicate with locals and stuff like that, you're always moving and you just feel like, I'm never really set up. Yep. And you also, I mean, a lot of the times with the races and stuff, you don't really get to enjoy, like really see the places that you go to. Like you don't really get to enjoy, like for instance, we went to uh, Krakow in, in Poland and like that that's that would be a pretty cool city just to go check out, but we never really got the opportunity to, uh, like go check it out because there's just no time at bike races and that's the thing too we're doing tour of spain practically going around the whole of spain yeah and yes we do sort of get a feel for it on the road but you don't no and like the other day when we finished up the top of this mountain in asturias we happened we had to descend down to the bus and we had to keep climbing up for another k which was pretty annoying (laughs) but it gave me a chance to look around because i wasn't racing anymore and i could take my time i looked around i was like wow it's actually awesome up here yeah. It's yeah. only one of the times I've really done it in the whole race. Actually, today, yeah, today, I mean, I didn't really get to enjoy that one particularly. Um, mm. Or you, you're talking about yesterday. No, it was that yesterday when we finished up the steep climb. And then we got the, the, we got the jackets and stuff. We went to that 1K sort of up before we went down. Remember? I actually don't remember that one. Pretty sure that was yesterday, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I actually I got to enjoy the scenery today. To be honest, uh, getting in the I got to get in the van and just chill on the way down. And I, it was actually the place that we went to was really beautiful. The mountains were beautiful. Mm. 
just like these cool little cottages and stuff out there. So it was. It's amazing how you just don't see. My mum's always saying to me something like, "Geez, it was really lovely where you're racing through today. Great beaches and mountains and the castles." And I'm like, "What are you even talking about?" And it's funny when you see the footage, you're like, "Oh, there was a beach right next to the road today." Yeah. <laughs> Had no idea. You have no idea that you're right next to a massive body of water and you're just cruising along, staring at somebody's wheel. How many gels will you guys have on a tough mountain stage like today? And does it upset, you, upset your stomach? Are we sponsored by Martin? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, that was a stupid question. Um, <laughs> not the question that that person Your asked. Your question. My question. Um, yeah, I, today I took two gels. Sometimes I'll do three on, on a day like today. Um, That's it, in the whole day? Yeah, I took a bar as well, mm. um, a protein bar, after we went flat stick over the first one to, you know, recover. <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah, I'll do two or three. Does it upset your stomach? No, nah, nah, not, not the Morton ones, but the, uh, the other, some of the other ones we have, I don't really, they, they kind of mess with my stomach quite a bit and give me bad yeah, and it's, it's, it's quite an individual thing that because like yeah I know other guys that they work for them and works for other guys but like today I ended up having probably six gels I reckon oh wow yeah <laughs> so All it's right. just like you know what it's only 145k we're going to be racing full gas there's not much time to really eat solid food so yeah you just want to try and well, I try and keep the 70 70 grams of carbs in an hour and I sort of just work off the gels pretty easy to do that yeah yeah as long as they don't hurt your stomach you exactly um, is there any riders in the Vuelta any riders in the Vuelta that you never go near oh that sorry is there any riders in the Vuelta where you go never seen or heard of him who's that uh yeah it's like most of the uh Asturias team or yeah, I have no idea who those guys are, but apparently they're they're ama- they're really good riders. Like they're really strong, and they've they've been riding a really good Volta, and they ride well as a team. So it's yeah, but I've never never heard of them or raced with them. I mean, maybe I've raced with them in the past, but I don't ever remember racing with them. So yeah. What is that? What is an underrated skill you consider important to be for a great bike race- racer? Uh, bike handling and positioning is probably the biggest. Do you reckon that's underrated? Uh, I think it is because a lot of like people concentrate on just pushing good watts. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that just focus on oh, I could do great power, all this, all this, but you got to be able to do it in a fluid, smooth way in the pack. Like you can't just sit on the outside of the field or next to the field and move up doing good power and then continue to do that like it's you're never going to win that way you got to be able to have a good mixture of being able to do put out good power and and position yourself and to do it smoothly without going up the outside every single time mm. but I, yeah, I don't know if that's underrated this is specific to you even though you've been answering all the questions do you ask older teammates for advice <coughs> a lot or is it more like watch and learn I think it's more watch and learn like that's specifically this I think this three weeks like I've been learning a lot from you as the road captain role they that's what they told me to do is to really pay attention to yeah. how that role works um, and yeah I've been just kind of watching and learning how you do it and yeah I've seen how other other teammates have done it in the past and I particularly like your style you have a good uh, thanks buddy we have a good vibe here within the group. I think this question's probably for me. What's the Luft scene like at the Vuelta? The what scene? Luft. That's the that the wearing mean? of the cap, the cycling cap. Ah. It's been pretty dismal. We uh, yeah. pretty much don't walk around in caps anymore because everyone just puts their helmet on races. So I would say it's non-existent. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty non-existent because you just... You go through your routine and you're like, ah, oh, I don't really want to bring out this cap just to go to the sign-on, and then you just want to kind of get ready. I reckon next week you and I should try and get into the village. 
Okay, let's do it. I need to get a t-shirt from my mom. Yeah. And my wife. Sweet. Yeah. All right, guys. Until next time. Thanks, Logan. What are you going to do Thank tomorrow you. on the rest day? Um, not sleep through the pancake breakfast, that's for sure. Uh, I'm going to do a little spin and uh, kind of let my wounds dry. Lay on the bed and let my wounds dry. Shave your legs? I'm definitely going to shave my legs and my face. You yeah. dirty bugger. I know. I'm kind of haggard right now. <laughs> All right, mate. Thanks. Yeah. Well, thanks guys for tuning in. I hope you've really enjoyed this little mini series over the Vuelta with our freshman Logan Owen. It's definitely been a roller coaster for all of us and especially Logan on his first tour. We're not there yet, but I have a lot of confidence he was gonna be right there in Madrid coming into this somewhat backed off last week, but there's still some big hurdles to come. Thanks for the support out on the road too. Like I've said, it really does help on this hard, long road to Madrid. And I want to say thanks again to my producer Lara behind the scenes who's been really helping me a lot during this Vuelta because there hasn't been a lot of time to record and produce and all this sort of stuff. So she's been great behind the scenes. I really love it when you get in touch. So make sure you get in touch with us at lifeinthepeloton.com or just send me a message on Instagram or Twitter and I'll try and get back to you or put some questions into the next pods coming up. So guys, until next time, cheers. Cheers.